know why this is still so difficult after this is the 12th time, this is actually the 13th time, and overall, this is the god knows how many times I've just sat in front of a microphone and started rambling and, and presenting and hosting and without any idea what I'm going to say. And But I actually do have some idea of what I'm going to say, and that is, this is Tom's Brain, the Thomas McNabb podcast, and I am Thomas McNabb. It'd be a bit weird if I got someone else to host the podcast. Um, but, you know, I do like to have on people who are important in my life, who help me ease into things a bit more, uh, less robotically, as sometimes these solo podcasts can come across. But not tonight. Tonight I'm in my cocoon. And I know everything that I need to say. And in fact, tonight isn't one of those solo podcasts. If all goes to plan, I'm going to be playing you part of something that I recorded earlier. Where I actually got out of the house and did something for a change because lately I've, I've been a bit housebound. <gasps> I can't say the word housebound without mentioning the fact that there is a brilliant Australian or New Zealand film called Housebound and it stars Morgana O'Reilly who plays Naomi in Neighbours. If you're a fan of Neighbours, of course, I am, because it's the best. It's the only soap I watch, and she's the best, and Housebound is the best. And I was devastated to read uh, that there is going to be a planned American remake. And I'm just like, what? Why do you need to remake a movie that isn't even in a different language? Just just show the original and the original is so funny and I got to see it at the Leeds Film Festival and I, it's it's on iTunes in America so if you're American and you live in America or you have an iTunes American account somehow I'll just buy it, take a chance and watch it if you enjoy comedy horror because it's brilliant you know, and you, and if they do remake it, you can annoy your friends by saying, oh, it's not as good as the original, because they never are. Never are. No exceptions. Is there an ex exception? Um, I was thinking about The Ring, because somebody was praising Naomi Watts, and I just didn't agree with it. I hated her character in that, Rachel. Oh, God. But I did like the way Gore Verbensky made the film look. It was a very beautifully shot film. So lately I've been a bit housebound because I bought The Sims 4. And... As I predicted I would be, I am addicted. <laughs> I predicted I was going to be addicted. Uh, as now, especially in video games, like it's happened. If I just, I like a video game, then I will play it all, all as much as I can, all the way through straight away. I, I can't, you know, pick it back up three or four months later and give it the same commitment as I did when I first started playing it, uh, which has gone on to be a bit upsetting because, you know, there is a, a Wii which was much loved once upon a time and now sits just growing dust. It remains to be seen whether The Sims 4 will keep my interest it's only been 
mm, 10 days and I'm only playing one character. It's the character that I first created when I booted up the game. She's called Myriad Lang. And that's the name that just popped into my head when I saw they like spit out a random sim and she was a black woman. And I was like, you know what? You are going to be called Myriad Lang. Lang with two L's, like Lloyd. And she mastered the gardening skill, the painting skill, and through selling fruits and vegetables and herbs and selling her paintings, she's doing really well and has built a nice little nest and she does want to nest now. Well, I say she. I've actually like come to the conclusion after 10 days that like I was really against the idea of having any babies because the they haven't given as much attention to the ch children as they have the adults. Like they've got young adult and adult and th those are the two major things. And teenagers, like teenagers now have a lot more... Um, responsibility and than they did in previous games so the children have been kind of left in the shadows you don't even have toddlers this time i i assume they're gonna come eventually and so i was gonna wait but now i'm th i just have I'm, I'm feeling a bit um what's the word feeling a bit broody. So the only reason I've left the house is to go to hospital. And this week I had three hospital appointments. And I wasn't bothered so much because I actually went a whole 10 days without going to the hospital. So I've actually been doing too much thinking and, you know, I think that's why I've kind of been losing myself in uh, The Sims because, you know, I can control somebody's life and escape from my own and the reality of my own is this drug trial, this epoetin steroid it hasn't worked and I didn't want to but I, I got my hopes up and I keep telling myself that I expected nothing but I think if you listen to this podcast, I was making plans and I wasn't like a actively making plans, but I was thinking further th into my life than I've ever, ever thought before. And that's the part that, you know, now all of a sudden, You know, somebody that had the best intentions, but they, you know, they said, well, you know, that hasn't worked. We'll move on now and find the next thing. And, but <sighs> there is no next thing. That's it. You know, this this was the only thing. It's taken 28 and a half years to come up with this. And I know for a fact I haven't got another 28 and a half years 
to wait around for a cure. And, you know, the Apoetin wasn't even a cure by a long shot because, you know, fair enough, it, it was going to drastically cut down on the number of transfusions and the amount of times that I'm in hospital, but I was still going to be allergic to the sun and... and <laughs> but... I mean, as I said, it was well-intentioned. And there is some truth to it, because you never know what's around the corner. Yes, it took 28 years to get to a first trial. Because it's taken 28 years to reach where we are in, in science. And the speed at which we're moving, it won't take another 28 years. But there is no, there is no congenital erythropoietic por porphyria research. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm lumped together with all sorts of different inexperienced departments and it's and it's all guesswork so anything that I do try you know it's not going to be specifically aimed for my illness because it's it's forgotten about it, you know it's hard to live a life where you know that you're going to be forgotten about and not just live the life, struggle. And e every day is a struggle. And, and usually when a person struggles, they get through and they're re rewarded. And... Oh, I've lost sight of the reward. But that all happened over the space of, as I said, 10 days. So I've been through the worst of it. There were some tears there and I channeled, I think I said that I channeled into writing a new song and I said that I was gonna read out that song in my writer's meetup, and that's what I did. You know, the, the great thing about doing these meetups is it brings people together who have shared interests. So, you know, you don't have to attend and, and introduce yourself and give everyone a backstory of, of what you like and why you are the way you are. It's just accepted. And I've never shared much of anything about my illness and, and treatment. And this is the most personal piece of writing that I've shared. And... I didn't feel too apprehensive because I do this podcast and I, and I know that it's quite different because I'm not doing the podcast in front of everyone who's, who's listening, but I've not got any qualms about bearing my soul because it is the way it is. There's, there's no point in sugarcoating it. You know, people are either going to accept it or to hell with them. Frankly, I, I don't 
don't have time for people in my life who don't want to hear about it. <laughs> or, you know what I mean? Who, who would be rather like, oh, I can't have you talking about death in front of me. I was like, well, girl, death is coming for all of us. You know what? It's called realness. And realness is the title of RuPaul's new album. <laughs> I didn't plan on saying this, but since it came up last week, how much, how kind of RuPaul's, it always comes back to RuPaul's words, but they just ring so true. And and here it is again, realness, and that's what it means. You know, it's not that superficial, <laughs> real, <laughs> superficial realness. It's not about that. It's about the fact that I am s serving realness and I don't have time for anybody in my life who can't deal with that. Suffice it to say, there's not a lot of people in my life because a lot of people, they can't look left to right. They they can only look in straight ahead, straight forward. Keep your eye on the prize. Don't observe the life around you. Don't get distracted by the the truth of the matter and the truth of the matter is it's going to be a time when you're alone and you're scared and frightened and and ain't nobody going to come help you you're going to have to you know you should have dealt with it a lot sooner because when that moment happens You'll be better off for it. You'll be able to pick yourself back up again. And as I've done now, and not not to be like gloaty or anything, but you know, there's just a matter of factness. Yes, I could have had a temporary rest from transfusions but the reality is not to be and okay so what huh, doesn't matter I like the social circle that the hospital brings me so to have to go there three times a week big whoop as I said it gives me a reason to get out of the house. And as such, that's kind of why I've left left this dear old podcast until the very last moment. But I like Saturdays. How are you liking Saturdays? And as and as I said, I've not entirely left everything until this last moment because I'm going to hand you over now to a previously recorded segment and I'm not sure how much I'll be able to use because there were like 14 other people some of which talk very quietly and far away from the microphone and by microphone I mean my mobile phone because I don't jam a microphone into random people's faces I'm not Juliana Rancic But they were all very understanding and well receiving of my song and idea to share it on the podcast. So 
I hope you appreciate some other voices for a change. Right, well, my object um, is uh, this new drug I've been trialling to treat my illness. Um, it's, um, well, it's something, I'm not entirely sure what it is, it's something to do with a poetin, and a poetin is a, some sort of part of the red blood cell that yeah. my body doesn't keep, and it sheds it from the cells um so to compensate for that i've had blood transfusions since i was three years old um and the older i've got the more frequently i've had these blood transfusions and um as of now they're every two weeks um and now this drug is supposed to um, boost the blood levels and um, I've been trialling it for the past tw tw 11 weeks and it's not worked and well I say it's not worked as no like I think it's not worked I'm, I'm definitely sure it's not worked out. <laughs> yeah. because um, I had quite a bad start to February um, with my levels they were just really low and i actually my platelets were suffering and i had a nosebleed i had two nosebleeds and they were pretty severe and you know it just kind of all brought to the realization that um it this kind of drug that i'd put all my um i'd i'd start I'd, yeah I'd, I'd i'd um i'd i'd tried not to but i in the back of my head, I'd been hoping, and yeah. they'd all come crashing down. So I channeled it into a song. Made it positive, mate. Nice work. <laughs> yeah. yeah good stuff. Oh, I've always learned to do that. Yeah. Um, and I'm not entirely happy with how it is. It's two. How many? No, that's one, two. Um, it's it's a few verses, and then I decided. It needed a chorus okay. at the end. Are you trying to just share it with us? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds good, man. Okay. You held the cure in your hand, a key to a promised land. All hopes of a life unfolded in front of me A needle pierced my skin Excitement rushed within But your truth was a lie disguised to encourage me To plan a life I had no right to own, to dream of light. My core began to freeze, so numb I can barely breathe. Familiar company comforted me. A body bound to bleed A shell of human greed No ghost left behind to roam Remember me And where I fell My soul expelled from earth A cruel 
mistake, a life opaque from birth, make me bleed from a well beneath, empty me of my hopes and dreams. Take from me, drill a hole in me, bleed for me, leave the light and let me be. It's a lot of bravery to do that. I'm sure he's had to sing a song. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> grand. As well, I think, to be fair, as well, with the lyrics. Yeah. And I think, I think it was the best thing to do with it. I think, you know, with those words you've written down, I think to read them out might not have had such an effect. I think it was sung. It sounded very hard. Good work, man. So you, 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 you've definitely got a touch of the miseries at the moment. Oh, no. <laughs> you getting over it. Oh, yeah, that was past. Past you, tense. You, you got, it was at, at, the, at the start of the two-week gap that we had. Yeah. yeah so. I, I'm glad that you did choose to sing it because lyrics are different to a poem, even though yeah. Yeah. a lot of people seem to say they're the same thing, but they're not. So those, so the, you, especially rhyming structures, I think are much more important in a song, and I don't think we would have got, I don't think we would have got as... I know, I think I know what you mean. Yeah. The eight bar rhythm is very fitting to lyrics and doesn't, doesn't necessarily fit a poem. I would actually yeah. have disagreed with some of the rhymes. Uh, some of the rhymes were rather convenient, but not necessarily as emotive. Uh, on the other hand, you're very stuck with rhymes because. Uh, you have got any choice in the matter. Oh, no, but the thing is there, sometimes you can use those rounds to channel how you're actually feeling. So, for example, you might turn around saying the map might not be as emotive, but then again, it's like saying that helps sort of perhaps put across how you're feeling at the time. And I think that's... Uh, Do you mind to have a look? Yeah. Yes. I think, that's, I think that's a nice way to do it. I think, I don't think, yeah, I don't think that song in itself is trying to be... I'm not, I'm not, I mean, the deepest thing. I'm saying it's an emotional... Yeah. It's like, you're giving, and it's almost like it's almost like it's got a pop element to it. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was. It's not my first song I've written. That's, 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 I mean, it's a popular. Sound, I feel like I'm know? bloody punching a baby here. <laughs> 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 like, come on. Right, right, right. Because the thing is, like, especially looking at the lyrics now, they are very much appropriate to what you were saying with the backstory and that. And I'm probably biased, but the actual tunes that you put with them were very punk. Poppy, <laughs> and to the point is, I can hear it. It's, it's, it reminded me of like kind of a couple of songs, sort of thing. And I think that maybe it's just my bias against that, but it kind of I felt like the melody kind of degraded the lyrics a bit because it made me think, like, oh, this is one of those songs where they go, like, oh, my baby, <laughs> I know you what... loved me, and now I want to pierce my heart. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And the thing is, it's not about that. And maybe, I don't know, it could be entirely me being a bitch. But, like, no. you know, like, but, I yeah. see what you mean. I oh, what it's, it's, easy to me. <laughs> it's easy to take this story and take it as a metaphor and not take that's it actually, as... Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's what works yeah. better. That's a much better way of saying it. If, yeah. if you yeah. had not given us the story beforehand and you had saying that, I could totally see how it would be. Yeah. That we yeah. could take yeah. it as, yeah. this yeah. is yeah. the big one. Yeah. 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 But was, knowing how heavy yeah. it actually is, it kind of goes... Well, at least for me, it, it touched on something I could relate to, yeah. and then kind of realizing, no, I have no fucking idea, do I? Yeah. 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 The, the thing is that the, the actual lyric is incredibly factual as opposed to emotive. That's yeah. it. Whereas yeah. most yeah. songs tend to be emotive. Yeah. 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 I know nothing about music. <laughs> Welcome to my road. Like, <laughs> what I do like, and what I like the most when people do it in this group, is when someone just reveals a bit of something that's yeah. really important mm. to them. And that's what shines out to me, whether it's music, whether it's written down in a poem, whether it's a story where they've 
creating the character around it. That's what came out from me. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went to the Isles of Arran about 20 years. Those are the lead savages, and you wouldn't think to hear that they're known as the savages, but that's their name. Um, and we meet in the function room of a pub in the middle of Leeds to share our writing with each other, and it's they are just an amazing supportive group who they strive to make me want to be a better writer and to share my work and, and to share my voice and which I am doing now. And I hope I showed you them in a positive light and hell if you're in the area and you want to share your writing come along and you should do it probably through the meetup group i I haven't told you where we meet up so you go to meetup dot well, let me get this right why do i always do this i always want to give out a web address and i never have it at hand so i just excuse me whilst i look it up okay if you would like to join the meetup, it is meetup.com forward slash the Leeds Savage Club. And that is the dash Leeds dash Savage dash Club. And on Twitter, search for that, the Leeds Savage Club, and the result will be brought to you like magic good. I'm good I'm good with my words but I'm not good with my voice and I'm terrible at giving directions I don't know why I'm actually censoring myself now because obviously I've broken the rule of not swearing well actually I haven't broken the rule of not swearing as you can see we're we're very unfiltered at the lead savage club And I I do appreciate their input so much. And who knows, maybe one of you are listening to this right now. And if I have gained some listeners, uh, I am eternally grateful for your support, for your kind words, for that one song and for sharing your words with me because I love every story that, I've heard and it, it 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 goes to make me a better writer. It, it honestly does um, because it's something that is so easy to neglect and I don't want to neglect it because I do enjoy writing and um, this song may be the start of an, a new project. Hopefully um, it, something will come of it, but if not, I've, I've got my fiction. To, which is obviously coming along, as as I explained earlier, The Sims 4 is, is certainly helping my imagination. So, I, 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 I don't know why I, I, I always say it, I hope. Because, you know what, if you didn't like it, screw you, I did. I really liked that. I really liked this episode. We did something a bit different, and I loved it. Yes, I would go as far to say that I loved it. And I know in 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 April I've got a uh, an episode planned. And I'm, I'm, so yes, we're planning ahead. Uh, and I really want to get my actual sister 
Haley on the podcast, um, but it re requires my mum to look after my nephews so I can remove Haley from the role as a mother and talk to her as my sister and my friend because I rarely see her like that anymore and it's quite sad because she's a really fun person when she is away from that mother role um, and that's the that's the Haley that I want to talk to and I want you to hear <laughs> That's not to say anything bad against my nephews, but you know, it's different. If you know a mother, it's different. It's different. I, I can't say it what it is, but it's it's different. You know, it's different. Okay. If you'd like to keep in contact with me, I am LGB Tom on Twitter. You can email Tom's Brain Two at yahoo.co.uk. There is a Facebook page if you would like to indeed like it. Facebook.com forward slash Tom's Brain Pod. And a thank you to Uber for keeping me mobile around Leeds. And if you could do me a favor and use the code Uber Tom Pod, you will get a £10 discount and I will get a £10 discount. And until next time, please keep well, stay creative, and stay alive. Thank you.